So when I'm learning how to invest, one other thing other than um, having my safety equipment on, and I, I did, I just, I have my uh, mask and my glasses over here. I'm actually just gonna put on my glasses. Um, I'm not gonna put on my mask until I'm actually casting because it's gonna be harder for you to hear me. Um, but if you notice, this says casting equipment right on it. So if I open the cabinet door, all of the rubber stoppers and the flasks and the rubber bowls and the investment vibrators are over here um, for you to use. Eventually, we will be using the spatula when we clean up the entire process at the end as a class. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to invest your piece, um, but what you need to know is I would really recommend wearing a smock. Um, I also need to take off my jewelry because if the investment gets stuck inside any kind of jewelry or your clothing and um, it dries in there, it's permanent. It's very much like plaster of Paris. So I took everything off. I do have a mask. Um, and safety glasses on as well. Right now I'm just getting water, but I'm just getting prepared to do all of the investing. So I'm making sure that I have all of my safety PPE on. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is turn the faucet on and I need the water to be lukewarm. Lukewarm water is not bathtub water because that would be a little bit more hot. It would be a lot warmer um, or like a hot tub if you've ever been in a hot tub but it's like not cold either. So this water is actually, it's like warm. I could maybe wash, and it's actually maybe a little too warm. So I'm gonna turn the cold on just a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to fill my graduated cylinder up to where it says small, and it's 90 milliliters on here. I actually have a medium-sized, I have a medium sized flask, so I'm going to need um, 240 of these. So I got two of the 90 milliliters, and then I've got another 70 over here. Um, so I'm gonna take my water and I'm going to pour the graduated cylinder water in here. And now here's the thing, I'm doing this by myself for a demonstration. If there are other people um, doing this as well, you do not take three, you use one, and then you can like add up the amount of milliliters that you need. Once I have that water in there, um, I'm then going to put on my mask. So it, um, I'm gonna try to talk through my mask. It's gonna be um, kind of difficult, but the investment is actually carcinogenic, which means it can cause cancer. So I wanna make sure that I'm protecting my lungs. So I'm gonna put on this mask to make sure that I don't um, get cancer from the materials that I'm working with. Um, so again, I put on the mask and I made sure that my glasses are over the top so that they hopefully won't steam up too terribly bad. Um, I'm going to undo the, the bag and then what I'm going to do is scoop some of the investment and I'm going to try not to get it um, anywhere that I don't want. I'm then going to sprinkle the investment into my rubber bowl that I poured the water into and part of the reason that we use a rubber bowl is the top is really flexible so that when I pour this later, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to pour because the top of that bowl bends. So um, you can see the investment's actually like sinking down into the water. And I wanna keep putting investments in here until I get a little island in the middle. So right now, and right, that's kind of what it should look like. So there's sort of a little island in here. I'm gonna actually mix, and I can tell already, I don't have quite enough investment powder in here. So if you notice, I have one hand that's dry and that's pouring the investment powder, and the other hand is mixing my investment. Um, and I have to use my um, fingers like this because I can actually feel all of the investment being mixed. Um, 
The powder is what's carcinogenic. So if I get the powder in my lungs, it's bad. When I actually am mixing with my hand, I'm not at risk right here, just so that you're aware, because I'm sure somebody is wondering about that. Um, again, I uh, don't have nearly enough investment powder in here, so I'm gonna take another scoop from the bucket, and then I'm going to just uh, put another, like I did a little, like a quarter of that scoop in there. The investment should actually feel like a milkshake or um, sometimes I talk about it feeling like either like if any of you have baked and you have made cake batter is really what it should feel like. So cake batter is kind of thick, but it's not as thick as like brownies or cookies. Um, and if you don't know what I mean because you're not a baker, you can kind of make it sort of like Elmer's glue, the, the liquidy kind. Um, and I can feel right here, it's starting to get um, more solidified and it's starting to become a thicker consistency of uh, um, a mixture. And I will show you what I mean in just a minute. I just wanna get all of the chunks um, mixed up in here. So here, here's what I mean. You can actually see this is very, very liquidy right now. Um, it should actually be much more like a milkshake or like paint or like Elmer's glue if um, you know what those different consistencies are like. And again, I use um, cake batter as the mixture consistency a lot of times. And actually it's starting to get pretty nice. Um, to you, it probably doesn't look any different, but it's a feel thing. It's a consistency or a textural thing that you have to feel. It's a little bit thicker, but I'm gonna put a little bit more of the investment powder in. So I had probably um, three of these scoopers full. Um, depending on how warm your water was, you may need more or less. Again, it's about the feeling of the investment before you pour it over the top of your piece. And I can tell I still am just not quite thick enough. So as I'm mixing this, I can see that it's, hopefully you guys can see, it's a little bit thicker like pancake batter or like cake batter. I'm going to take the rest off my hand here. I've got my piece really close by and I'm going to just squeeze that container like I had mentioned before. And I have to be at a 45 degree angle as I'm pouring, sort of like root beer because as I'm pouring this, I want to go right to the top, just like I told you before. So I just went right over the top of where that is. And you can actually even see it's just a tiny bit over there. Once I have my investment in, I want to immediately put this on an investment vibrator as high as I can. And what will happen is there's bubbles inside here. Hopefully you guys can see the bubbles inside coming up to the surface. So I want to get all of the air bubbles out so that I don't have any excess things that are going to be metal on my piece after a while. If your piece floats to the surface at this point, it's really important that you immediately take it out, dump it into the bucket that's in the sink and start the process over and you have to wash it off before it gets hard because otherwise you won't get your piece out and then you're going to have to start everything over. Um, but there is a way of saving what you have here. If you grab the piece off of the top, if it happens to float because you didn't like get the sprue connected as well as maybe you should have, um, and you can start over, but you have to rinse immediately. Um, so here after a minute, after one minute, what I want to do is I'm going to turn the, I turned it down just a little bit and I can actually see there's not very many air bubbles, but I do want to leave the vibration on for at least two minutes so that I'm getting all of the bubbles out of the way of my piece. Because if a bubble attaches to the side of my piece, metal is going to fill there and then you're not going to have that same model that you had before. If you've got a little bit of um, extra, I probably have enough inside here to do another small flask uh, if somebody um, needs it. However, if nobody else is ready for that part, I can just take this and I'm going to actually dump it into the garbage and then I'm going to wash my um, rubber bowl 
and I need to wash it inside another bucket because this investment cannot go down the sink. Again, if it gets in my clothes or my jewelry, it's permanent and it's the same with the pipes in the sink. So I need to take a sponge and I'm gonna take one of these little um, or orange, one of these yellow and green guys and I'm going to actually wash off my I'm going to wash off my bowl. I'm actually even going to put a little bit of water inside here. And then I'm going to take the sponge and wash the rest. So I'm washing my bowl. Dumped out the leftover. Once my bowl is... Um, wet, I can just set it right here so that it dries. Um, it's okay to set it there. I don't have anything on the counter, so I'm not gonna worry about cleaning up the counter. Uh, so once I have my uh, investment actually poured into my piece, I wanna take my flask and put it over by this vent. Um, because that way nobody will touch it. It's kind of out of the way and other classroom activities can go on. And I do have my tape with my name on. Eventually, I'm going to take one of those wax tools and I'm gonna carve my name into the top of this. But right now, my piece is still liquidy. Hopefully, you can see it's still liquidy on there because I, if I shake it, it moves a little bit. But it should be solidified in a little while. And then I'm just gonna take that tool, carve my initials and my calculated weight into the top of this piece and then eventually I'm gonna take the rubber stopper off. So I can see my pieces solidified now. If I tap this, you can see it's not actually like coming off onto my fingers. So I'm gonna take just, um, it's just a, a poker, sort of like a pin tool and I'm gonna carve my initials in here and I have to be really gentle, especially for those of you that may have cast like really close to that top edge and I'm just gonna put Miss S because everybody kind of knows who that is, I hope. Um, and I may have to wait until it's a little bit more solidified to do that because mine is still a little bit tacky. It was about 10 minutes. So probably about 15 minutes after you're done mixing that investment and pouring it in, it'll be solidified enough that you can actually carve your name. And technically I need to carve my weight. So I had 99.8, um, I think it was. I'm gonna put 99.8 in here. And I just carved my weight and my name just to prove that that's what we should be doing when we're casting. One other thing that I would do right now is I would actually recommend pulling off your um, rubber stopper. Mine is a little bit um, wet yet and I don't wanna actually wreck what's underneath here. So I'm gonna wait until tomorrow before I pull this off. But it's always a good idea as soon as this is um, solidified that you pull off the rubber stopper because again, there's several other people that are working in the studio with you and you wanna make sure that we have, we don't necessarily have 20 of all the same size. So if you're all working kind of the same size, you would need to share this uh, rubber stopper with the next person. We have plenty of flasks, but there aren't enough rubber stoppers to go around. So the next thing I would do is I would actually pull this part off. Um, and we will show you what the bottom of that looks like right before we cast. As I mentioned before, the only carcinogenic risk is when the um, Investment is in the powder form, and I'm just gonna scoop this up and I'm gonna get, I accidentally um, tipped my bucket over, and so I have liquid investment all over the table, but when I leave this room, I shouldn't have any stuff on the table or counter um, that, you know, somebody else should have to clean up after me. I should be cleaning up after myself. So I'm gonna make sure that I get all the investment off of there, and I'm gonna come back and get this in a moment. Um, if you've got extra investment, now I would not necessarily use stuff that's been scraped up off the table because you can see it's contaminated in here, but if I've got extra investment, I can actually use this with another um, person later. And part of the reason that I ended up with more is my water was a little bit too cold, and so I had to use more investment powder than what I would have wanted to. So another thing, uh, since I accidentally made a mess, is I have to go and clean 
any of the other tools that I was using. So I'm just gonna really quickly clean my scraper and then I'm going to take that same water and I'm just using the water that's in this bucket. It might leave a little bit of a residue on the table later, but I just wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up all of the problem that I created before. And I'm gonna put my hand underneath here. Um, one thing that's really important, so you see how I had water in there? Um, eventually that um, will solidify in the bottom of the garbage can, it's not gonna be liquid forever. It's really important though when you're done investing to actually close this bag because that way we don't get water inside there. If there's water inside the bag, and I did just push this back too because I'm done using it right now, I should also put a cover over the top of it because now it's creating a safe environment for everybody in the classroom. Um, so again, I'm just gonna get more water on my sponge and I'm gonna make sure that my whole area is really nice and cleaned up. And once I'm done with that, if I'm the last person that's using um, the investment vibrator, I'm gonna um, unplug that and then actually put it back in the cabinet underneath 